Constance Stewart Larrabee began taking pictures 75 years ago. As a young woman, she documented the lives of South Africa's blacks. Toward the end of the Second World War, she became her country's first female war photographer. Four years later, Larrabee came to the United States, married and settled on the Chesapeake Bay, still taking pictures. We asked her to talk about the wartime photographs, which are on display at the Corcoran Museum of Art here in Washington. She said that in 1944, she was asked by the government to take pictures of South African troops, so she flew to Egypt. As soon as I got there, I found that everybody had moved on, and I was in Cairo and could go out dancing at night and have a good time, but there were no people to photograph. The soldiers had left. They'd gone to, to Italy. So I managed to get, talk, I talked my way into being sent to Rome. And as soon as I got to Rome, I found the South Africans who had been sent over there had moved on again because the war, uh, Paris had just been liberated. And off I went to the south of France six days after it was liberated. The, some of the pictures that you took when you were in the south of France shortly after the uh, the Allies landed there. In one of those pictures uh, is a woman, the picture was taken in Saint-Tropez, and it's a woman uh, whose uh, hair, head has been shaved. Yes. This woman's hair, she, she has her yes, hair. Yes, she wasn't going to be parted. She's holding it in her arms. Yeah, and weeping over it. And you just, you just sort of went by this scene and Came looked upon at it? it. I was in a jeep that was rushing up to see how far we could go because they were still liberating. You couldn't move into a village until it had been liberated and we were in the process of moving in, liberating, seeing well, the Germans going out the other end of the little towns as we were coming in one end. And we came across the local people um, deciding to take matters into their own hands and shave the heads of the women who had collaborated during the war with the Germans. And so they had to live without their with shaven heads until it grew in again, which pointed out, those shaven heads pointed out that they had collaborated. How did, how did the soldiers feel about a young woman? Uh, you, were, you were a pretty good-looking young woman, too, I could imagine. They were very, very helpful. <laughs> helpful. Yeah. I never had any problems. There were thousands of them. They were heavily chaperoned when there were thousands of men and one woman. Do you remember these? Do you remember any of these young men? Never saw them again. And there was one that I saw 50 years later. <laughs> then we have it. We have that picture too. Um, let's see. Could you oh, just yes. tell us about what's in the picture and and? Well, we were in convoy going up pushing the Germans out of one end of the village as we came in the other. And as you see, these people were coming to the windows and waving flags. And for five years, they'd been under German rule until that moment, that day. And uh, you want to know why I took the photo? Mm -hmm. That happened to be in front of me, and I thought it was a... I saw it as an interesting picture. It had flags, it had soldiers, it had civilians. You can see women coming to the windows. Yes, it tells a story. And flags hanging yes, down. Yes. And that little boy was up there so thrilled. And he was a civilian, but he climbed up on this army tank, you see. And so I took that picture. And then when I had an exhibition, this man who was living in California, he saw the picture. Which man is it? This one sitting there. And he's just, he's the sort of smiling person mm -hmm. sitting up on the mm -hmm. top of a tank with his uh, mm -hmm. helmet he, down over his eyes. But, but he never saw it till he saw it in my exhibition. Fifty years later, wasn't that interesting? And he got my address and he, and he called me up and he and his wife came and visited me. It's amazing. It's amazing and that he recognized himself. All these people that I photographed during the war, I never saw them again. At the end of that year, you, you were in France in the fall of 1944, mm -hmm. and at the very end of the year, the turn of the year, mm -hmm. that's when you were back in Italy. Yes. The uh, South African department that I was attached to wrote and said, what are you doing in Europe when you ought to be photographing South Africans? And I hadn't really photographed more than two or three. So I rushed back, flew back, hitchhiked 
on a mail plane, slept on a mail, and went back to Italy and up to the 6th Division. You were in the uh, Up in, in the, the mountains. mountains. Mm. Very hard winter. No heat. I spent Christmas Eve in a blackout in bed with flu, alone in a deserted schoolhouse. I always said if I ever got home again, I'd never, never be cold again. And I'd always have a warm bathroom. Mm. It was cold. You know, when I was looking at your pictures, um, it seemed as, to me as though the first part of the collection, the French pictures that you took, um, in, in most of those pictures, what you seem to have been looking for was some sign of life. Were you looking for those kinds of pictures? I wasn't that... looking for it. I just saw it as a picture and took it. I'm big on design and composition and and an interest in people. And that's, I take it. Mm-hmm. And I don't hesitate to take it. I don't dilly-dally. 